As the head of sales and marketing department, you hold the key to the top line of the organization. Meeting customer requirements and improving the awareness of your product are amongst the key roles and responsibilities that you hold. Once your operations department has produced products and you have them available in your inventory, you would be in a position to start allocating the products to various territories. Please note that you would be in a position to allocate products to territories that you have already acquired. Territories you have acquired are highlighted in the color pink and the rest that you have not acquired are highlighted in gray. You would be in a position to view the number of products that are currently available in your inventory by clicking on the product and looking at the total number of products available as against the icon of the product that you have selected. The decision console for marketing has two distinct sections. The one on top records your decision and the one in bottom gives you the set of choices that you have to aid in decision making. Determine the product and target segment that you would like to focus. Having determined the target segment and the product that you would like to focus, you would need to check the territory characteristics in order to understand the demand of the products across various target segments and territories. Having made up your mind, select the segment and enter the products that you would like to produce. The territory characteristics provides information on the demand of the products across various target segments and territories. Determine the product and the target segment that you would like to focus. The demand values are trends and are subject to change time to time. Having made up your mind, select the segment and enter the number of products that you would like to allocate across each of the territories. Please note that you would be in a position to allocate products only lesser than the total number of products which are available to you in your inventory. Once you have entered the product, you would now need to determine the price. Pricing, as you already know, is both an art and science. In order to price the product, you would need to determine and understand the unit cost of your product, the cost of selling and administration expenses, the margins that you would like to make, customer expectations, and the competitor's pricing. Now let's quickly see where you could get hold of these information. Unit cost of production is something that you could ask the head of operations to give you some information about. The cost of selling and, admit, selling and administration expenses are available in your profit and loss statement for you to take a look at. The margins that you would like to make is something that you as a team would have to determine. Customer expectations are currently available to you in the customer expectation tab and competitors pricing is something that you could look at in the reports that gets generated at the end of the quarter. Enter the price in the pricing section and determine the discounts from the discount drop down and also choose if you would like to provide after sale service and warranty for the products that you're selling. Please note that there is a trade off between customer expectations and the cost that you will have to incur if you would have to provide after sales and warranty to your customers. The product configuration helps you in determining to choose the product features that are relevant to the target segment. Having completed the product allocation and pricing strategy, you would now need to decide on the promotion and the distribution strategy. Determine the awareness that you wish to create for your products by checking them with the customer expected awareness. Once you select the product and the segment that you would like to choose, you would be in a position to understand the overall awareness core that your customers are expecting. Now, you would also need to determine your promotion strategy in terms of the media and the mode that you would like to choose because you would be in a position to select different modes and check their effectiveness as against the target segment that you would be choosing. Please note, the awareness score that you create by running these campaigns are cumulative. So this also should ensure that you have a clear view of the products that you are planning to market because if you choose to market more than one product, you would need to create awareness for each of these products across various segments and territories. The third most crucial decision that you as the head of sales need to take is to determine your distribution strategy. Distributors are vendors or partners who help you reach your end customers. Depending upon the territory and segment that you might have to choose, you would need to deploy a distributor channel enabling you to meet the depth required. Apart from e-commerce, the other channels that you select 
have a cascading nature. For example, selecting a super stockist would mean that you would be in a position as a manufacturer to send your products to a super stockist who in turn would send it to agency and then to a wholesaler, to a retailer and then to an end customer. Distributors operate on various margins. Their effectiveness depends on the margins that you would like to provide for the products that they would be distributing. You also would be in a position to provide training and marketing support to your distributors to enable them to sell your products. But please do bear in mind that each of this have an impact on your budgets. The final step in your entire production and product planning is to allocate the products to various territories and determine the sales force who needs to be deployed across these territories. Check the required sales force tab in order to understand the total number of sales force that are required to sell the products across various territories. The employee strength in the section on top gives you a perspective of the total sales force which are currently available and the required sales force tells you that for the products that you're willing to sell, the total number of sales force that you would need to deploy. And any gap between these two means that you have shortage of resources and you immediately will have to intimate your HR department to start recruiting. Once you've allocated the products, the sales happens at the end of every quarter. To know the impact of sales and the revenue, you would need to click on reports and then on KPI to know more. The segment-wise, product-wise sales report gives you a clear indication of the total revenue that you have made in these combination. Change the year and quarter in order to understand the details pertaining to the selected year quarter combination. Once you click on the revenue, you would be in a position to understand a detailed report. The sales snapshot and the detailed report gives you an indication of your sales performance. It gives you information on the total number of products that you have allocated and the total number of products that have been sold and the reasons why you were not in a position to sell the products. You would be in a position to change the year quarter and the product and segment combination to understand the necessary details across the selected choices. Please remember, you would be in a position to allocate products at any given point in time and you also would be in a position to review your performance periodically. You hold a pivotal role in channeling your organization to greater success. You hold the key to top-line growth. Hope you have a great time.